Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be doing the handover on the Chasson Flash 03 which is a 2007 model. So as we come round the driver's side, you've got the habitation door which will lock and unlock with the round headed key. So you can lock it and unlock it to gain access to the vehicle. You've got your two fridge vents. You've got your C-reel there for your awning and you've got your hookup point. So to hook the vehicle up, you get your 25 meter hookup lead, lift the collar, lift the flap on the van and hook up. And then to unhook, there's a small blue lever here which you'd push down to unhook the vehicle. Always hook the vehicle up first on the side as we wouldn't want you walking around with a live lead in the wet or should you leave before you, you could get electric shock and that's not something we want you to have to get. And then next week you've got your LPG, liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker. And in here is where you'll find your six kilogram gas bottle. So to hook the pigtail on the bottle, it's a left hand thread, hand tighten and turn on at the top of the bottle. Always turn it off when you travel and make sure it's securely strapped in. And then you can turn it on when you get your destination. And at the back, this is your garage space, but there's also your bunk. So you can push your bunk bed up and use these clips here to lock the bunk bed in to give you a good garage space. And you'll also find your leisure battery in here as well. You've got your, your handle for your Steadies at the back. So this is one. And this is your waste water drain down. The waste is just here, so you pull your waste handle to drop your waste water, which you'd normally drive over a grid on the way out of a site and open this to drain the vehicle down. But in the winter, you want your waste, your fresh and your boiler all drained off. And I'll show you the other two training points. On the back, you do have your reversing camera, your high-level brake light, your two windows, your points for a bike rack, should you ever want a bike rack fitted, and you've got your tow bar with 13-pin electrics and your bumper bar. Coming around the passenger side of the vehicle, you do have your cassette, so your toilet's in there, this is your cassette. So again, it'll open with the round-headed key. And to get the cassette out, there is a small yellow handle that you just slide, get the cassette out in the empty, take the yellow cap off, go to your waste disposal point, which is normally behind or beside the toilet block, press this button here, empty it out. This just allows air in and gives it a consistent flow when emptying. Put some water in, give it a shake about, and empty again. And then if you're using the liquid in the chemical form, the chemical form liquid cap falls straight in here and it's ready to be put back in the van and be used if you're using the tablets which are the little sachets you put a pint of water in push it back into the vehicle and drop one straight down the toilet and then you do have your fresh water filler point so again we'll open with the round headed key open this up Go and buy yourself a hose pipe and fill it with a hose pipe. So normally most campsites have just a brass tap, so you'll need a hose pipe, the hose lock and the brass tap connector. Put the hose pipe in there until it overflows if you want a full tank or you can see the level of fresh water that you have on board. If you are traveling, going wild camping, you will have to take a full tank of water with you. If you're going to a site, take a maximum of 20 liters as it gives you a better payload and it increases the fuel consumption. You've got your exhaust for your diesel heater and then should you ever be heating the water off gas this cover must come off so to get this cover off you put some pressure on here put your thumb in the middle and peel the cover off that's only if you're heating the water on gas if you're heating the water on electric but this model is only gas only so this cover must come off when you're heating the water You've got your diesel filler beside the door which will open with the main forward key so either the one with the remote or the blade key push in and then 
you put your diesel filler in there to fill with diesel. And then here your engine battery is underneath the seat, so your driver's seat is where your engine battery is underneath. You've got your glove box, you've got your electric windows and you've, this locks the cab doors on an evening. If you just press this when you're in, it'll lock those two doors or you can use the remote. And then coming round to the front, your bonnet releases with the key. So you put the key in above the Ford badge, turn it to your left and then turn it to your right to release the bonnet. And then underneath here you do have your fuses. Underneath the red cap here is where you'll find the positive jump start for a jump lead and then you put your negative onto the engine hoist here. You've got your coolant, you've got your screen wash for, for your uh, washer jets, you've got your power steering fluid, you've got your oil filler and a dipstick down the front of the engine there and you do have your brake fluid. You've also got your weight so it's Three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. You can tow an extra ton behind you on the tow bar. And you've got your, your build number down here as well. So should you ever need parts for the vehicle, quote your build number and we'll be able to get the right parts for your vehicle. So when you first enter the van, you'll want to put the main power on. So this will be determined by if you're hooked up, you'll have 240 volt. If not, you will just have 12 volt. So to turn the panel on, you press the on button, which is your master switch. And then next to it you do have your awning light and below you've got your pump. So you must have the pump on to use the water on your shower, your kitchen tap, your hand basin tap and the toilet. Otherwise you'll get nothing. But make sure that you've got sufficient water on board. Otherwise there will be, you'll have, there'll be danger of basically frying the pump which would result in a new pump. And then down the side you've got the truck, which is your Ford. This shows you your Ford engine battery level. You've got the trailer, which shows you your leisure battery reading. And you've got the wavy lines, which shows you your fresh water, which is about two thirds, so it's nearly full. So on this seat behind the cab, you, your travelling seat, you've got two switches. You've got your Truma boiler switch, so this is how you heat your water on gas. So this cover must come off. It's off in the middle. You've got 50 degrees of heating your hot water and 70 degrees of heating your hot water. If you get a little red dot, you've either, which me indicates the heater has failed, you've either left the cover on or you've run out of gas. And then next to it, you've got your heater for the vehicle, which is a diesel or Basto heater. So to heat, you press the, the wavy lines here and you get the red light. To turn off, it's the O. And then if you want to recirculate the heat that's already been, you've heated the vehicle, you just want to recirculate the heat, you just put the fan on and then you choose your temperature here. So from high to low. So in the kitchen area, you've got three gas rings, which you will need a match or a lighter to light these. So you've got one, two, and three, lit on gas. And then once you've had this on for any length of time, allow it to cool before you put the glass lid down. And then next week you do have, so make sure your pump's on, which it is and you'll get the water and it'll start pressurizing so you've got your hot and you've got your cold side of the top. Obviously in the winter when you winterize in the van and you have um, opened the fresh, the waste and the boiler, leave the taps open in the middle position of the mixer to stop any air locks on the kitchen, the hand basin, unscrew the shower head and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray and make sure your boiler is open. To open all your cupboards, press the button in and open. And then below you do have your grill. You've got a light there. And then you use your igniter and you're gonna light the grill. 
when you're traveling you may want to take the grill pan out as it can be noisy when you're on the road but your cutlery drawer and below you've got some storage next week you do have your Dometic fridge so to work your Dometic fridge it's a three-way fridge so it's gas electric and battery off when running the engine so the battery setting only works when the engine is running so if you can put on a gas you'll hear it clicking this is a self-ignition fridge so it will light on gas by itself if you're struggling to get this lit on gas always bring it through the hob first as this is the highest place the gas comes to in the vehicle so you'd use gas if you're wild camping and you weren't hooked up but if you were hooked up you wouldn't want to waste your gas so you'd go to mains 240 volt which is indicated by the plug and then when you're traveling so the idea with the with the battery this is a feed off the engine when the engine is running and it is designed to keep the temperature of the fridge at the same when departing so the idea here is if you hook it up the day before put your shopping in allow it to get cool and then no matter how long you travel it should stay cool enough to keep the shopping fresh and then you've got a travel catch as well so you can lock it and you can unlock it and open it there the temperature is on this wheel so max and min freezer box and then again when winterizing if you clean the fridge out leave no food in and then just allow prop the fridge door open to allow air circulation in and out of the fridge and in the wardrobe next to it you've got your status tv aerial so you would loosen the nut off here if you're struggling to find a tv signal and push the aerial up and use the small toggle to direct the aerial but when you're traveling you must make sure that the, the aerial is pulled firmly into the vehicle as far as it will go and you've tightened this up to stop it from moving you've got your status amplifier there so that's just your digital amplifier and below you do have all your gas taps but if you've got a problem with gas turn it off at the top of the bottle to be safe these are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced but you can isolate each appliance like so so that's on that's off and next week you've got your charger so this charges your engine battery and leisure battery when hooked up and below you've got your main fuse board for your 12 volt so these have got 12 volt fuses in so it would be a good idea to go and get some spares and carry them with you just in case the 12 volt appliance does blow a fuse you can put a new one in to see if there is a fault or it might have just blew a fuse and next to it you've got your RCD when on mains with your trip tester on 240 so if your hair dryer or kettle blows a fuse you can try here before you try your site now in your washroom so to operate your fed fit toilet make sure the pumps on and you'll be able to press this blue little button on the back of the toilet which is your flush so flushes the toilet with fresh water and then just to the and then underneath to the right of me you've got your slide which is also known as your trap door and if you slide that at the right it'll open the trap door and allow your waste to go into your cassette so always use a toilet with this um, blade open the slide the trap door whatever you want to call it open and then once you've finished flush and close the blade when the cassette is full it will indicate here by the man emptying it will go red and you can turn the toilet around you've got your light switch here for your bathroom underneath your sink toilet re cabinet cabinet for more toiletries obviously you keep your sink plugs which are on the soap tray your windows open like so and then you push this out and it'll stay out you've got to push it all the way out to bring it back in but all windows and skylights must be closed when you travel and then again you've got your, your shower so again when winterizing if you just take this shower hose off because the water can build up here and freeze and then your shower hose will need to be replaced if it is if the if water does freeze in it and you've got your shower hanging real for your towel and your shower screen to come across so to open the skylight above the kitchen which is the same above the looting and the bunk beds just use a small toggle to open 
and then you can lock it in but again you must have this closed when traveling and you can put the safety catch on there to stop it from moving so to make the dinette into a bed the table will come lift 90 degrees off the bar and then you'll be there's a button on the side of the leg to fold the leg in over and it will go onto the grooves here on both sides you pull these out to extend the bed and you'd use an infill cushion and that rear cushion here to go along here to fill the space into a double bed using the backrests of the seats. So now in the cab, you do have your handbrake to your right. You've got your light control, so off, side lights, full beam, pull out for your park lights and your fogs and your headlight adjustment. You've got your mirror adjustment there, which is only the top, the little one at the bottom must be manually moved. You've got your electric windows and again that lock button to lock the cab doors on an evening. To open the top panel here there's this little catch which has got a 12 volt supply in. So if you have a sat nav you can hook it in there to save the wire from dangling down the dash. And then you do have your drinks holder which you can pull over and you've got two drinks holders there. On the steering wheel itself, you've got your wipers, cruise control, which is on and off, reset, and then you can set the speed by the plus and the minus. And you've got your indicators, which is also your trip computer, so you can scroll through the screen here in the middle. So it'll tell you your outside temperature, your average speed, your average fuel usage, your distance to empty, and so on. Five speed manual gearbox with pull to the right and down for reverse. You've got your hazard lights. You've got your fan speed, your distribution and your temperature for the air conditioning. A small tray there. And this is fitted with a Pioneer single din head unit so you turn it on. SRC is the source. So you've got radio, auxiliary, USB, or C a CD if there was a CD in. It's an FM radio, so you'd press 1 to 6 to save your favourite channels. You've got a 12 volt there, your glove box, and your other storage bin at the top. You've got your rear view camera also here as well, so when I go into reverse, your rear view view camera comes on. So also on the side of the driver's seat beside the handbrake is an on off switch. This is for the reversing camera. So the reversing camera would be off all the time with the engine running if the switch wasn't switched. And if I switch the switch there, the camera will come on. So the camera's come on as the last owner has wired the camera direct to the battery. So you'd have to turn this off manually when you leave the van, otherwise there is a risk of the engine battery flattening because of the reverse and monitor being on all the time. So to winterize the vehicle, your boiler is located underneath the backwards facing traveling seat, which is in there, and it holds 10 litres of water at any one time. In the winter, it is very important that you leave the vehicle completely dry of water so drain it completely it needs to be bone dry so you've opened your waste outside you've opened your fresh you need to open this boiler and allow the 10 litres of water to come out which you do by lifting it up stand it up on edge like so and it'll drain all the water directly out underneath the chassis and leave the boiler completely dry when you come back to reuse the vehicle you would put the tap back down so when it's up it is open when it's down it is closed you would fill the vehicle with water put the pump on go to the cold side of the tap first it will cough splutter make all sorts of noises on the hot side of the tap on the cold you'll get automatic cold water and when you're on the hot this is when it's filling the boiler from the fresh water until you get a steady flow on the kitchen tap then you do the bathroom and the shower and then it is primed for the season but it's very important you open the boiler and drain the vehicle down as this voids warranties so to drain your fresh water out 
It's located underneath the filler point, so where you fill the fresh water up on the side of the passenger van, the passenger side of the van even, you go underneath and there is a tap with a red lever on. If you open that, it will drain your fresh water. So again, you drive over a grid. If you've got a full tank of water and you're going home, obviously it's better to drive home without a full tank. 20 litres minimum if you need to, well maximum if you need to use the toilet. But this is how you do it by using the red lever and this will slowly drain your fresh water off like so.